Pro Tour Los Angeles will be the first time at a large competitive scale that we'll finally see how heavy hitters has impacted the Blitz meta. Coming out of Skirmish Season 8, Briar was pretty easily the standout hero in the format. But with five new heroes and an arena full of class support and heavy hitters, will Briar be dethroned in LA? A huge shout out to our channel members for supporting what we do here. If you want to get involved with the channel and the Dice Commando community, please consider joining as a channel member. Remember, these videos are only possible with your support. You can show that support with a like, a subscribe, and by leaving us a comment and sharing your feedback. Community first, and go Commando. Hey there, my flesh and blood friends. Welcome back to Dice Commando and go again. A fabulous cast, and thanks so much for tuning in here on your Friday morning, and happy flesh and blood Friday to you. And uh, best of luck with uh, for the weekend fab warriors like myself. Best of luck this weekend for whatever you're trying to do. Now, today what I want to do, I want to talk Blitz, right? We have not seen a, in, in, from the competitive standpoint, I should say, you know, the global competitive standpoint, we've not seen a ton of movement on Blitz, at least since coming out of Skirmish Season 8. So there, there are a couple pieces to this puzzle that I want to talk about today. So apologies in advance if this one goes a little longer. But what I want to do is I want to talk about what the meta looked like out of that talk heavy hitters in that context, not just the heroes from heavy hitters, but also the impacts of that. And then potentially where I, where basically, basically it's a tier list of sorts, but, but it's, it's, it's not, we're not going to do a tier list. Okay. But we're going to talk blitz meta overall and kind of some of my thoughts. Okay. So coming out of skirmish season eight, we saw quite a bit of movement in that, right? That's, you know, the, the term bloodbath I was throwing around, around quite a bit. And I, I think it's apt. Uh, Brian, when he came on, even used the term bloodbath as well. It was accurate, right? We we lost a lot of heroes in Skirmish Season 8. Now, Briar was easily the standout best hero in the meta, top tier 1, tier 0, whatever you kids want to call it, coming out of Skirmish Season 8. The results that you see across the screen now are from my personal CMH Briar deck. That list, by the way, is available to channel members, has been for a while, continues to perform even to this day. The win rate of, again, take win rates on Talishar with a grain of salt, we all know that uh, I, I could be cherry picking matches. I could be, I could be inflating this data. I'm not, but you need to make the conclusions that you do. But either way, a 73% win rate in a format, especially like Blitz with high rolling and stuff like that is, is pretty crazy, right? So she is, she's easily, easily the best, or I should say was, potentially still is. She's still very good. Listen, <laughs> spoiler alert, she's still very good. Okay, but it's come down a bit. And in fact... Uh, coming out of about prior to the heavy hitters release, my win rate was above 75%, uh, uh, maybe right at 75%. Now it's slightly lower. Again, 200 some matches. That's a lot of me trying to manipulate. The, again, you, you make the decision you need to make. And you can come to your own conclusion. If you disagree that Briar's the best, you probably didn't click on this video anyway. So fair enough. All right. So, but with all that, that was like a minute and a half justification there for real data. I love it. I love how we have to do the internet. Okay. But if we want to look at my opinion of who the top folks were in Skirmish Season 8, or coming out of Skirmish Season 8, I should say, it was Briar, Emperor, and Yoji. Those are the ones whom I identified as being the, the top. And I want to be very clear here. This is Blitz. A lot of things can happen. Okay. Very, very, very clearly a lot of things can happen. You can just have a Brute take you out turn zero it happens, right? It, it can happen. That's Blitz sometimes. It is the way it is. But from a consistent winning standpoint, Briar, Emperor, and Yoji were the ones that I thought were the ones at the top. And, you know, like the tier zero one or whatever you want to call it. Okay. So now comes heavy hitters. So we get five new heroes. We get a fair amount of support for Rhinar. Okay. Brone Breaker Brello, right? You all know my love affair with that card, right? It's a thing. So where do I see the impacts of those heroes fitting. Okay, the, the first one, and I, I'm going through them kind of in order, not, not really, but Victor's number one, because I, I think Victor's legit. Okay, I've actually, I actually think Victor's probably, probably better than Yoji, just because it's more of, so one of the reasons Yoji struggles is, the, you know, the he's slow, right? I mean, that's, you know, you've got a 22 health hero, he effectively has no ability you're choosing him because you're the reason you choose him is because you're trying to do something with your deck and it gives you more health to do it. I mean, that's the reality of Yoji, right? It's not that Yoji himself is good. It's that the deck that you're playing Yoji with is good. And then you have Victor come in and he's got gold and all of a sudden he can throw overpowered for the popping. You, should, you know, he can block two and then overpower for plus three or 
you know, do your thing with plus three and overpower. You get it. He's good. Okay. Now, where things are on the Talishars, this is a very real problem on Talishars versus paper. And again, why I'm very excited about seeing how things flush out in Pro Tour LA. Okay. On the Talishar, it is very clear that the Victor players are cherry picking their matches to play against people who don't clash well. It, it is very, very, very clear. When I sit down with a KO, no Victor wants to play me. When I sit down with a Warrior or something like that, all of a sudden the Victors are queued up and joining my games, right? That is, again, my observation, but it's very clear to me on what I've been playing that the Victor folks are... So if you see someone come in, again, that's why we talked about the Talishar win rates. If you see a Victor come in, they're like, oh, I've got an 82% win rate. And it's like, yeah, probably you're cherry picking your matches, right? That said, with all that said, I still think Victor is very, very, very strong. He's just a great value deck. And he's doing kind of the guardian things. And even though he doesn't dominate like Bravo does, I think he's probably even slightly better than Bravo in Blitz right now. All right? That's not to say that, Blitz, that Bravo can't come out and Crippling Crush, Spinal, and all that, right? Of course he can. Again, high rolly format. But from a consistency standpoint, I think Victor is probably, probably pretty good. Okay. Moving into Betsy, just because we're talking guardians, I'm not super impressed, impressed with Betsy in constructed again she can do things um you know if she gets again in blitz if she gets the right draw but i just i don't see i don't think she's better than bravo and i don't think she's better than victor so that's kind of my take she plays very different than yoji and stuff so i'm not trying to compare there but in terms of just trying to do damage and wagers and stuff like that i think i think she's just not there next comes ko i think ko is super good especially because you have the He's to a certain extent KO's more high to a certain extent KO's high rolly, and to a certain extent he's not high rolly as compared to the other roots, right? Obviously in Blitz, if he's able to get the cast bones or something, like if he can go first and get cast bones, just GG, bro, right? But that's always a thing with brutes. What I think is really awesome about KO is just the amount of damage he's able to consistently present, or at least consistently threaten, I should say. So I'm pretty impressed with him. I don't think he he's probably like what we would call what I would call like a tier 1.5 hero. Okay. He's not a tier two, tier zero, whatever, whatever. However you want to do it. It's like the third time I've said it. I think he's like in between. Okay. I, I don't think he's a like uber tier hero. He's like right there. He's very good. Reinar, I think Reinar has a lot of value. Ironically, right, with brutes and discarding cards and stuff, has a lot of value right now. And I think sometimes, unless you're trying to do like the full mid range thing, and it's maybe again, it's maybe I haven't quite figured him out, and I haven't seen other people. I just don't think he's as good as Ko right now. But again, he can still pop off. And I, I did, I played a game the other day where I got quadruple intimidated on turn one. I went first, and then they, I was able even to get a D react in Arsenal, and I still got quadruple intimidated on turn one, right? And like Ko can't do that. Right, he can cast bones. I mean, and technically Reiner can too, but you're gonna do it with KO, right? So Reiner can still pop off, but I think that still puts I think that's like his play in Blitz. So I think he's probably like a tier two hero, in my opinion. Okay. Now Kasai. Kasai is we'll talk about Kasai and Olympia kind of together because I haven't really found a home for Olympia yet. There's the Axes build, which is very good. Decimator build's been very popular with him as well. I still think Dorinthia does Decimator better because Olympia is going with... We talked a lot about Decimator builds back in the day and how I thought going with an aggressive Decimator build was inherently better than like a fatigue Decimator build because you want to get to the point where they can block. And that's what Olympia does well, right? He does, you know, you've got the wager, the front pump wager things. You get them to a point where they take the damage, eventually have to start blocking, then you're getting great value out of Decimator. So I think he does that really well. He also does the dual axe swing thing very well. His specialization up the ante is very good. But he's just he just doesn't seem to sing as well as the other warrior we'll talk about in a second. Kasai also is very good, but I think she, right now in Blitz, isn't quite as combo capable as she is in CC in terms of, I should say, not combo, I should say pop-off capable. But let's go ahead and go on to my next point. These two, I think, are being soured by the fact that I really think Quicksilver Prodigy is super awesome right now. 
I also would put Quicksilver Prodigy like a tier 1.5 hero. Uh, she does very well into Emperor and stuff like that, because and even Briar to a certain extent, because again, here you know you're playing like 12 blues in that deck. You can you've got a bit of armor to do some stuff. You can consistently apply pressure, and all of a sudden they've got four health left, and they don't know what to do anymore, right? So I've been pretty impressed with Quicksilver Prodigy, and again. It, the ability for Quickie P to put, it's not even necessarily putting the counter on, but it's that they have to be prepared and just like know that at some point you're going to come and threaten getting a counter on or two counters on and they have to stop you and then they throw a turn away and it might have been a critical turn for them. I think it's a big deal, right? So I think she's one of the few like true mid-range decks that's like good, right? It's it's very hard in this form. It, it, it does seem at times in Blitz that it's either go, 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 or fatigue, right? And I think Quickie P is very well done or very well positioned, I should say, in like a mid-rangey type build. But then I guess I guess you could make the same argument for KO, to be fair. So, so fair enough. Okay, so where do I see, where do I think everything lies right now? Well, Briar's still crazy good. Briar actually does a pretty good job into Victor, right? So the, the cast is, can anyone dethrone briar i i don't know that they can right victor does uh sorry sorry briar does very well into victor because she just keeps coming um she's always done very well against yoji because you can set up and you know you can kind of if you're playing it right you can set up the cmhs and all of a sudden you go three wide on cmhs and like because they're giving you more time right so that's and then that's that's maybe where Victor has an advantage again over Yoji is Victor can still like throw a choke slam like throws a choke slam for ten and then all of a sudden he's coming with a sun and all you right it's just like seven eight ten all the time so that does put on a lot of pressure right so that's why I think that's why I think he's pretty well positioned within the Blitz meta KO again can just do really well so it, I I I think. If we're going to answer my question of can we stop Briar, sure, she's beatable, but it's Blitz, so everybody's beatable. But I think your big, I think your big winners out of heavy hitters in terms of taking her down. I think you have Victor. I think you have Quicksilver Prodigy. I think Emperor actually took a hit here. I haven't been as impressed with his ability to. First off, the fact that Briar is so good really hurts Emperor, right? Because Emperor cannot deal with arcane damage. So Rosetta Thorn really hurts. He also struggles into Vincette. Vincette in Blitz can actually do things also. It's not a very consistent deck, but sometimes it just like comes and then creepers and then comes again. And you're like, what the hell just happened? Right? And then you've got four health left and there's nine rune chance coming at you next turn. That's an exaggeration, but you understand what I'm saying. So there's a lot of really cool things going on in Blitz right now. And, you know, I, I, I still think Briar probably leads the charge, but I'd really like to know what, what you all think below and i'm sure that i left somebody's favorite hero out of this discussion not intentionally necessarily but i'm focusing in on the ones that i think are probably probably the most impactful okay hey folks sorry about the interruption but i was going through the editing and realized i completely skipped one of the heroes who i think is absolutely phenomenal right now i can't believe i did it but it, it's shanane right shiana is absolutely crazy right now right there's multi pummel build she picked up all the specs and heavy hitters again I'll, I'll link the video we talked about it my deck has actually improved quite a bit since then so thank you for all your feedback but shiana is very 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 good and very very scary right she has the Cavdane-esque thing of just being fundamental flesh and blood with pummel, but she's got all these tricks and uh, she's really hard to predict because her hand could look like anything. I, I think Shiana is, I, I put her in like the tier 1.5, right? Is she going to go out and win every single tournament every single weekend? Absolutely not, but she's going to spike some stuff. And depending on what the, you know, if, if the points don't change going into the next skirmish season, granted we'll have at least another, at least another expansion before then. But I still think and she can only get better as she picks up more specs, right? And most of the specs she plays are huge. So if we have an illusionist set, she's not going to be as impacted by that. So I think she looks real, real, real good right now for certain, but also going into the future. And there's, um, you know, actually, I, I do want to say for the for the Teclo people out there, I've actually been pretty impressed with some of the uh, Professor Teclovat, right? The the Professor, right? I, I, I don't 
the professor. I've been actually pretty impressed with some builds I've seen there. The problem with that deck is it's so it's so binary, right? Like it either just blocks for a million years and then gets its thing and wins, or it just doesn't block. So it, that doesn't feel super reliable to me in terms of trying to cut through a tournament. So I do think at Pro Tour LA we likely see a bunch of bright. If we're looking at top fours, maybe top eights, however you want to look at it. I think you're going to see a couple Briars. I think you're going to see a couple Victors. Probably see an Emperor or two in there. Probably see a Warrior in there, whether it be Quickie P or whether it be Kasai. Probably Quickie P. And then you probably have a wild card because of splits, right? Probably get a Brood in there or maybe somebody else. Maybe some, right? Azalea can sometimes just like dominate for 15. It's a thing, right? It's a thing. Actually, it would be 14 usually. <laughs> Sorry, 14. But you, you get my point. So anyway, folks, let me know what you're thinking below. I just wanted to chat blitz today on it's 17 minutes in too much too much blitz chat but thanks for joining me actually if you made it this far give me uh give me a quickie pee in the comments my friend so nothing else go commando